Nitrogen Prize of a young mathematician for, from developing countries from ICTP. Uh, then later on, uh, and moreover, she is the fourth Indian mathematician who received such an honor. And uh, she also received uh, the prize of Indian National Science Academy. And uh, one of uh, the most important uh, thing, which is uh, really, really uh, quite, uh, quite a dream of any mathematician, she was uh, among the distinguished invited speaker of the International Congress of Mathematics, uh, which was held in 2022. So we are very lucky to have uh, Nina Gupta uh, among the list of our speaker. So Professor Nina uh, is working in the vast area of algebraic geometry, and she's very, very active. And uh, you can see her papers on archive uh, and uh, her problems ranging from uh, polynomial rings to algebraic geometry, uh, a fine, particularly a fine setting as well as in projective setting. Over to you, Nina. Thank you, Professor Imran, for this nice welcome and introduction. Uh, I thank uh, you for inviting me in this uh, John Conway Spirited Lecture Series. Uh, so today, this, uh, my talk is uh, on some problems on polynomial rings, and uh, I uh, it's mainly for students. And I'm sorry if uh, you people already know about this, but uh, this is mainly targeted to students. And uh, I will start my lecture with uh, paying my tribute to Professor Sri Ramesh Abhankar. Uh, he had uh, once written a poem, uh, polynomials and power series, may they forever rule the world. In fact, these are the first two lines of his famous poem. Uh, you can search it, you will find it. So it's very nice. And he was the one who had uh, proved many important uh, deep results on polynomials by using just elementary mathematics. So by elementary, I mean, it's no way uh, easy, but uh, it also does not involve modern machinery. So, and uh, his I, way of working is quite uh, elementary and down to earth. So, with this, uh, I introduce the problem. So polynomials, uh, I hope we are all familiar with. In We always see in the school days. So it is a very simple object, polynomial in one variables. We, it's a expansion like this, finite terms with coefficients coming from, so if you are in a school, you know that these coefficients are rational numbers or reals or complex numbers. And moment you grow higher in mathematics, these coefficients, uh, you may take it from a ring or a field. So this is a polynomial in one variable. You can generalize it to a polynomial in two variables and so in, in many variables. The set of all polynomials have a very natural property that you can add any two polynomials or subtracts, or the product of two polynomials is again a polynomial. Thus, the collection of all such polynomials forms a structure, which in mathematics we call them ring. And we denote it by this notation R x1 up to xn, where R is the coefficient ring. It may be the field of rational numbers, complex numbers. And for higher mathematics, you can take it to be any ring. And this will be the notation R square bracket n. Polynomials rings have been, and their quotients by ideas, have been playing a central theme of research uh, right from the 19th century. And many great and deep results have been proved on this. So like uh, in school, we study this uh, coordinate geometry. So what we do is that we study the geometric property of some objects using algebraic techniques like uh, solving two equations or so. So this is uh, the first introduction of algebraic geometry in our school days. David Hilbert was, is well known, probably is, was the greatest figure in mathematics who uh, had laid down the foundation of mathematics for the 19th century. And the, he was the, probably the one who made the study of polynomial rings uh, very interesting. So 
and some important early breakthroughs were obtained by him. So throughout my talk, small k will always denote a field. A field is a space where we can add, subtract, and multiply any two polynomials, any two elements. So this is the field. So the first early breakthrough was the Hilbert's basis theorem, which says that every ideal of a polynomial ring is finitely generated, which solved a fundamental problem in invariant theory. Uh, geometrically, it means that if you look at the zero locus of any number of polynomials, uh, then that zero locus can be obtained by the intersection of only finitely many polynomials. And similarly, the Hilbert basis Neustrelen set, uh, which uh, builds a bridge between algebra and geometry. So on, on the left hand side, you have geometry which it deals with the zero set of uh, finitely many polynomials. On the right-hand side, you have a ring. So the, this correspondence between uh, geometry and ring uh, have been uh, very crucial and uh, there it uh, leads to the uh, this, uh, new subject or new era of mathematics, this uh, algebraic geometry, commutative algebraic geometry, that is studying the geometric properties of the varieties using ring theoretic properties of uh, rings. So this IV, V is uh, usually the zero set of a system of uh, polynomials. And IV is uh, all those uh, polynomials, uh, zero set of uh, some, uh, which vanishes on a affine variety. So this, uh, for n equal to one, this correspondence is nothing but the fundamental theorem of algebra. Another important uh, result, which is related to the polynomial rings are the Hilbert's Sporting problem, which is related to the finite generation of a ring of invariance of uh, group actions. Maybe we will not get into that. Let us first uh, discuss what we are going to talk in today's talk. So today, uh, uh, I will, uh, tell you a list of some finitely many problems. Uh, though these problems are well known uh, and usually easy to state. And some of these problems like say question problem number one, uh, I can easily state to a high school student, but uh, unfortunately this is uh, one of the most notorious problem uh, for the mathematicians even in 21st century. And then I will talk about the Zariski's cancellation problem and the affine fibration problem, epimorphism problem, and maybe linearization problem. I don't think I will have time for the other two characterization and the EN forms. So these are some list of problems on polynomial rings. And uh, what is the fundamental problem? So which I can tell to, to my students or juniors that what is the problem? The problem is given a polynomial ring like this, k is a field and x1, x2, xn are the coordinates. If I tell you a polynomial f is given and uh, when will this f be a coordinate? That is, uh, can you find another set of n minus one polynomials f2, f3, fn such that this polynomial ring kx1 up to xn is generated by f F2, F3, Fn. So this is one of the fundamental problem that uh, given any polynomial F, whether that polynomial F is a coordinate. Another problem is given any ring A, arbitrary ring A, which is maybe a zero set of some polynomials in finitely many variables, whether that ring A is isomorphic to a polynomial ring in n variable. So these are the two basic fundamental problem which uh, is probably related to most of the problems which I discussed there. And uh, this will be the notation a, R, a equal to R square bracket N. That would mean that A is a polynomial ring in N variables over R. Uh, now just a, a very brief introduction to what is the problem. So in high school, uh, probably we have seen this kind of change of coordinates like uh, 
shifting a origin to another point, say A, B in R2, or rotating the axis. So what is we are doing? So we sometimes use this kind of transformation uh, like this, where A, B, C, D, E, and F are real numbers. So if I define X dash is equal to this and Y dash equal to this, that we can take X dash and Y dash as our new set of coordinates. But is any choice of this A, B, C, D, E, F are allowed? No. We always need that A, D minus B, C is not equal to zero. That is the transforming determinant is a non-zero determinant, non-similar. These are called linear change of coordinates. Similarly, there are conic changes like uh, you change x dash by uh, ax plus y square and change y dash to some polynomial in y plus a polynomial y plus a polynomial in ax plus y square. So for any polynomial, and you can keep on doing like this. That uh, means you can keep on applying this kind of change of coordinates. A very deep result in mathematics is that, in fact. Any change of coordinate in the polynomial ring Rxy is actually obtained by applying these two kinds of uh, change of coordinates. So, uh, so this is the converse of this. That is, uh, if you have Rxy is equal to Rf comma G, then this F and G has been obtained by repeated application of these two kinds of coordinates. This is the linear change of coordinates. Uh, yeah. Sorry, uh, saying something? No, no, please continue. Atif, yeah. please keep everyone, uh, please keep, your, uh, keep yourself muted. Uh, Nina, please continue. Yeah, so what I want to say is that uh, this is a deep result uh, that uh, any uh, ch change of uh, coordinates by using linear transformation, and these are called triangular transformation. These two will generate the whole group of automorphism of the polynomial ring Rxy. And this problem for higher variables, for instance, if I have to describe that all change of coordinates of Rxy z, then that is a difficult open problem. And that is probably uh, one of the most uh, important and uh, unsolved problem uh, about which we have no answer. And uh, so moment, uh, you will see that in most of the problems which I will be talking about, uh, the difficulty level rises moment we go from two to three, and it is precisely because of this that we don't know how a uh, change of coordinates happen in higher dimensions. So, now I come to the first problem, the Jacobian conjecture. This is something which I can tell even to an high school student. I'm very proud to say, unfortunately, this is probably one of the most notorious problem. And many, many mathematicians have tried it. Uh, sometimes they really failed, uh, but sometimes they felt that they have solved it. They have published their results and many incorrect proofs are also available. Even though uh, I will tell you the problem, the problem is very simple. Take any two polynomials f and g in two variables and consider the Jacobian of this two polynomial, which is the determinant of this matrix. So del f del x is a partial derivative of the polynomial f with respect to x and y, and del g del x, del g del y. So this is a two by two matrix, and the determinant of this matrix is known as the Jacobian of f comma g. Now, suppose there are two more polynomials, P and Q, such that you can express X in terms of F and G and Y in terms of F and G. Then using chain rule, you can see the product of these two matrix. So if you take the partial derivative with respect to X, then it is on this side, it is one. Then this is del, F, del P, del F, del F, del X, del P, del G, del G, del X. So you will get this uh, product. And then it's easy to see that the product of this two by two matrices give rise to the identity matrix. And hence, if I take the determinant on both sides, so this determinant is one, so determinant of this times this must be one. And determinant is what? Determinant is a polynomial in X and Y. So the product of two polynomial is one would imply the Jacobian of F and G 
must be a non-zero complex number. So the Jacobian conjecture asks the converse. Is the converse true? That is, suppose F and G are two non-zero polynomials uh, such that uh, there exist a, uh, P and such two non-zero polynomials such that their Jacobian is a non-zero complex number, whether you can represent X and Y in terms of F and G. So that is, you can find P and Q such that X is a polynomial in F and G and Y is also a polynomial in F and G. So this is the Jacobian conjecture for N equal to two. This can be generalized to N variables that suppose F1, F2, Fn are polynomials in N variable with whose determinant Jacobian of F1, F2, Fn is a non-zero complex number, then there exists P1, P2, Pn, such that you can express uh, Xi a polynomial in F2, Fi. So this is the conjecture, and uh, there are several equivalent formulations. Uh, even one of the equivalent formulation is that you can express uh, in terms of uh, some derivations, which is known as local important. I will not get into that. There have been many incorrect attempts, even published incorrect proofs. And uh, it is one of the 18 problem listed by Smale in 1998, which was inspired by Hilbert's uh, list of problems in 1900. So Hilbert has listed down some 23 open problems in the beginning of uh, 19th century, 20th century. So there he listed down some 23 problems out of which many of them have been solved. So inspired by that, Smale in 1998 listed down some 18 problems for the 21st century mathematicians and Jacobian conjecture is one of them. I probably have never thought about this problem because I have heard that if people start thinking about Jacobian conjecture, they cannot think any other mathematics. So I'm restraining myself from this. Now I will come to the Zariski's cancellation problem. Oscar Zariski has uh, one of the founder of uh, uh, modern algebraic geometry. He brought uh, rigor in the classical algebraic geometry and laid the foundation of uh, modern algebraic geometry with Andrew Weil and connected it with commutative algebra. So I come to the problem. So K is a field and A and K is the set of, uh, as I said, it is the set K and um, N tuple of uh, num elements from the field K with a Zariski topology and uh, it has a sheaf structure it is called the affine N space over K. The cancellation problem asks, whether the affine n space a and k is cancellative as an affine variety. That is, for an affine variety v, if v cross a1 k is isomorphic to the affine n plus one space, does that necessarily imply that the affine variety v is isomorphic to the affine n space? Uh, equivalently, as a problem in commutative algebra, this can be posed like this whether the polynomial ring in n variables k x n up to x n is cancellative. That is, suppose a is a given ring and the polynomial ring in one variable over a is isomorphic to the polynomial ring in n plus one variable over the field k. Does that necessarily imply that the ring a is itself a polynomial ring in n variable? So let me explain what the problem is. So suppose this is a polynomial ring in n plus one variable. So this polynomial ring in n plus one variable can be thought of as a polynomial ring in x n plus one with coefficients from this uh, subring k x n up to x n. But this uh, subring k x n up to x n, this is not constant. This can keep on vary in infinitely many ways. For example, in this two variable case, this k x y, it's also is a polynomial ring uh, in Y with coefficients from KX. And you can also think it as a polynomial in Y with coefficients from the subring X plus Y or say X plus Y square and so on. So what I mean to say is that this uh, subring 
uh, kx is not constant but there is one similarity which we can see that all the subrings are isomorphic to a polynomial ring in one variable the zariski's cancellation problem asks whether all such coefficient rings are necessarily isomorphic so that is the problem and uh, this problem was known to have an affirmative answer for n equal to 1 by abhenker ekin and heinzer the problem for n equal to 2 was a deep problem means it was non trivial and it was solved by nianishi and subi with an important contribution by fujita in characteristic zero and uh, over a field of perfect field it was solved by russell uh, later we along with professor bhartwadekar we gave a proof for any arbitrary field the research for the case n equal to 2 had led to beautiful topological characterization of the affine plane by C. P. Ramanujam and the algebraic characterization of the polynomial ring K2 by Miyanishi, which eventually led to the solution for n equal to 2. So here is C. P. Ramanujan. Uh, about him, Mumford had once said that he felt the spirit of mathematics demanded of him not merely routine developments, but the right theorem on any given topic. And these are the giants in the fine algebraic geometry, Professor Burja, Professor Miyanishi, Professor Russell, and Professor Kouras. So for n equal to three or n greater than equal to three, I have shown that this problem does not have an affirmative answer in positive characteristic when K is a field of positive characteristic. And uh, this is still an open problem in characteristic zero for n greater than equal to three. Now, let me just uh, give you a brief idea of what was this uh, n equal to three case and how it was solved. So this was this ring. A, which is a polynomial ring in four variable, divided, quotiented by this polynomial. So here K is a field of positive characteristic P. Then Professor Asanuma uh, had uh, studied this ring. He discovered this ring and he proved important results about it on the year 1987 when he was discussing the affine vibration problem. He wrote that this ring A is a stably polynomial ring. That is, if you adjoin one more variable to this, then it becomes a polynomial ring in four variables. However, this ring A is not a polynomial ring over the subring Kx. So this was his uh, result he discovered in 1987. And uh, so these are all Kx isomorphic. So this small x is the image of capital X in A. And in the year 1994, he again revisited this example in the context of a linearization problem. And there he posed this problem, whether A is itself a polynomial ring in three variables over K. Note that this one does not imply this because here this isomorphism is with respect to Kx, X is fixed. So it may happen that A itself is a polynomial ring in three variable. So I came to know about Asanuma's example. So when he was visiting ISI, so this is a major difficulty in algebraic geometry, which is that given any ring, whether it is a polynomial ring in three variables. So this was one of the fundamental difficult problem. As Professor Asanuma, he was visiting ISI. He had visited ISI several times. It was during one of his visits that I came across this ring of Asanuma. And there I wanted to discuss with him that this ring may not be a polynomial ring. But uh, yeah, so why Asanuma was, uh, had asked this problem, whether A is a polynomial ring in three variables, because this problem has dual consequences. If you prove yes, then we would have got a counter example to the linearization problem in positive characteristic for the affine three space, which we will discuss later. And if you prove that, yes, no, this ring is not a polynomial ring, then clearly it's a counterexample to the Zelsky's cancellation problem for the affine three space in positive characteristic. Peter Russell's uh, popularized this as Asanuma's dilemma in 
many in his uh, survey articles. And I showed that this ring A is not a polynomial ring when this integer M is greater than or equal to two. So now I come to the affine fibration problem. So for any ring R and a prime ideal P of R and A and R algebra, KP denotes the field of fractions of the integral domain R mod P or it's the uh, field of fractions of the local ring uh, RP. And A tensor KP is the fiber ring of A at P. The ring A is called an AN fibration over R if A is flat over R, it is finitely generated over R, and the, all the fiber rings of A over R is a polynomial ring in N variables over R. A famous problem of Dolgajem and Westfeller asked whether any AN fibration or a regular local ring is necessarily a polynomial ring in N variables. So if R is a regular local ring of dimension B and A is an AN fibration, does that imply that A is isomorphic to a polynomial ring in N variable? So this is an uh, open problem. And this problem is known to have an affirmative answer for n equal to one, and where d is the dimension is greater than or equal to one for any d and n equal to one. So the answer is yes. This was proved by Kambayashi and Miyanishi. Later, uh, my supervisor, Professor Datta, had shown that uh, yes, this uh, fiber condition, which is there for every prime ideal you can actually reduce it to only height one prime ideas. So this was his contribution that uh, for A1 fibration, it is enough to assume the fiber conditions on prime ideas of height less than equal to one. For N equal to two and D equal to one. So when D is equal to one, R is a discrete valuation ring. Uh, it was a non-trivial result due to Sathe who proved that if R a discrete valuation ring contains the field of rational numbers, then any A2 fibration is necessarily a polynomial ring. And his professor Sathe, it was during picture, his my supervisor, A.K. Datta, and it's me. So it was uh, this example of Asanuma, which I had just now discussed, it was in this context of A2 fibration problem. Asanuma proved that if a discrete valuation ring does not contain the field of rational numbers, A2 fibration need not be a polynomial ring. So this is where R, the ring R does not contain the field of rational numbers. And uh, we ha I have generalized it uh, to give this example of Asanuma in higher dimension to prove that if you increase the dimension for any uh, ring, uh, A2 fibration need not be trivial if R does not contain the field of rational numbers. And this is an open problem still, if R contains the field of rational numbers. One of them, or I would say that this is one of the best known result in the context of affine fibration problem is due to Asanoma, who proved that over a regular local ring, any A and fibration is stably polynomial. That is, after adjoining L variable, it's going to be a polynomial ring in N plus L variable. So this is, so in a way, it says that A and fibrations are stably polynomial rings. So if you have to look for a counterexample to the cancellation problem, you better look at counterexample to the uh, affine fibration problems. Now you come to this uh, asonoma rings once again. So asonomous ring is of this type that uh, it is a polynomial ring in four variable quotiented by one linear equation in Y. So this was the form of the asonomous ring. And what is this polynomial GZT? So GZT is a special kind of polynomial. It is uh, P is a characteristic of the field and P is not dividing the integer S. So this polynomial G satisfies this property that this polynomial G defines a line that is kzt mod g is a polynomial ring in one variable. However, g is not a coordinate. So kzt is not a polynomial ring over kg. So this is uh, such a polynomial g is called a non-trivial line. That is a polynomial f 
is said to be a non-trivial line if it satisfies this property. Examples of such non-trivial lines were given by Segre as early as in 1957 and 58, and which was generalized by Nagata in 1972 over fields of positive characteristic. What if characteristic of the field is zero? So here comes uh, one of the most, uh, I would say, landmark result in the area of affine algebraic geometry, one of the earliest known result, and probably the best known result, because this result cannot be, could not be generalized in higher dimension. So here K is a field of characteristic zero, and F and G are any polynomial in one variable. Be such that you can write T in terms of F and G as a polynomial. Then either the T degree of F will divide the T degree of G, or the T degree of G will divide the T degree of F. Isn't it the result quite simple? We can tell it to any student. This implies, this is a bit of a higher mathematics you need to know that if F is a line, then F must be a coordinate. That is, for a field of characteristic zero, there does not exist any non-trivial line. So, which is something we have seen over a field of a positive characteristic, there exist non-trivial lines, but over a field of characteristic zero, there does not exist any non-trivial line. This was proved independently by Suzuki for the complex number field. Again, this is the major difficulty which arises in F and algebraic geometry is to decide when a given polynomial F is a coordinate. So given some conditions on F, whether that implies it's a coordinate, this leads to the abhankar sarthes conjecture, which says that uh, if F defines an hyperplane, that is Kx1 to Xn mod F is a polynomial ring in n minus one variable, does that necessarily imply that F is a coordinate? So this is a conjecture which was posed by abhankar and sarthes in characteristic zero. Uh, first major result was uh, is after n equal to 2 or n equal to 3. This result was obtained by Sarthe in characteristic 0 and Peter Russell for arbitrary characteristic that if uh, G is a linear plane in Y. So here, uh, G is a polynomial which is linear in Y and with coefficients from X and Z. Then uh, if G is an hypersurf G is a plane, then G must be a coordinate. In fact, uh, they have proved that uh, you can find X1 in K, a polynomial in X and Z, such that the coefficient of Y is actually a polynomial in X1, which is a coordinate, and G is a coordinate along with X1. Thus, uh, we can ask this question in generalize this problem in four variables and ask. Suppose uh, G is a polynomial in four variables which defines an affine three space. Does that necessarily imply that G is a coordinate, at least in this special case where it is a linear polynomial in Y with coefficients from one variable? And uh, I could do it for AX is equal to X to the power M as an application of uh, one of my studies in the uh, uh, in the context of uh, Zariski's cancellation problem, when I was studying, I could solve it for a AX is equal to X to the power M, and M is greater than 1. Now, suppose uh, uh, there are other results on the uh, abhankar sarthes uh, conjecture of apimorphism problem, that uh, if uh, this was uh, proved by David Wright, when F is of this form, or say Russell and Sarthe, in three variables and uh, Kaliman again, uh, this was for complex number field, which you can probably generalize to characteristic zero. And if all the translators of G are affine to space, then G must be a coordinate. And there are other results. Of course, this is not the complete list of results, but uh, no complete result has been obtained for the case N equal to three. Now I come to the linearization problem. So 
this is again in conjecture by Kambayashi. So K is here is an algebraically closed field. Uh, this is Kambayashi had conjecture that every algebraic action of the group K star, the multiplicative group K star on the polynomial ring Kn is linearizable. That is for any Z graded structure of the polynomial ring Kn, there exists a set of variables in Kn which are homogeneous with respect to the Z trade. So algebraically, the problem is basically if you have a Z graded structure, you can find a homogeneous set of coordinates. That is the problem. And this problem was proved to have an affirmative answer for n less than or equal to 2 by Kambayashi. And however, this problem for n equal to 3 for the complex number field, which was proved by Elsel and Chorus, was not so easy. It had come as an effort of several mathematicians and over a period of uh, two decades, this uh, problem was solved. And I will come to the history a little later. And this, uh, once they proved it for the complex number field, they could generalize it to any field of characteristic zero. For n equal to three, this is an open problem in positive characteristic. And n equal to four, this is again an open problem in characteristic zero. However, for n greater than or equal to four, in case of positive characteristic, Asanuma had uh, counter examples, produced counter example in the 1994. And it, it is in this context of linearization problem, he revisited his uh, example again. And that example was used to give counter examples in positive characteristic for any n greater than or equal to four. And he also, uh, sorry, he also gave uh, counter examples for uh, field of characteristic zero for real number field and n greater than or equal to five, but uh, the problem is still open for the complex number field. And there are also results and problems on linearizability of the torus action on Kn for uh, K star R actions, but I will not get into that. I will now first uh, discuss this case n equal to three and the complex number field. So this is one of the example from a family of uh, three folds constructed by Oras and Russell in the context of linearization problem. This is one of the simplest example. You can see it's a linear polynomial in Y with this uh, simple equations. And if V is the affine variety, which is uh, given by the zero set of this uh, linear polynomial, then a problem which was open for some time was that whether this ring A is isomorphic to a polynomial ring in three variables. The reason why this problem was difficult was because this ring A is uh, very similar to the polynomial ring in three variables. It is a smooth ring, regular ring. It's a unique factorization domain with uh, trivial units. The units are coming from the complex numbers. And this ring A is sandwiched between the two polynomial rings. All projective models or the vector bundles over A are free. The affine variety V, which is a, uh, given by A, is actually diffeomorphic to the R6. And the logarithmic Kodara dimension is also minus infinity. If this ring were isomorphic to a polynomial ring in three variable, then it would have been a counterexample to the linearization conjecture for C3. And also the abhyankar sarthes conjecture, because uh, see abhyankar sarthes conjecture is CXYZ mod F is C2 would imply that F is a coordinate. Now, if this ring A is C3, then you note that if I look at small x, which is the image of capital X in A, then A mod X minus lambda for lambda non-zero must be C2. So if you put X is equal to some say one or two, then this is Y equal to something. So this ring is C2. On the other hand, if uh, quotient by x, then that ring is never C2. So small x can never be a coordinate. So x minus lambda. So this would have been a counterexample to the abhankar sarthes conjecture. And it was uh, makarli -Manav. In fact, uh, this problem was posed by Russell in a conference in 1994 in, um, uh, where makarli -Manav was present. And, uh, there he claimed that, yes, this ring A is not a polynomial ring. 
and in fact he proved that the an invariant associated to a which is named after him now known as makalimanov invariant is cx which is not uh, and hence it cannot be a polynomial ring in trivialness so his professor makalimanov in his style lecturing at some place so this led to subsequently uh, kaliman and makalimanov showed that none of the cora sessel three folds are isomorphic to c3 and this led to the cora sessel theorem that every c star action on c3 is linearizable now a fundamental problem which is open is that whether this ring a is a stably polynomial ring means after adjoining one more variable whether it's a polynomial ring in four variables and if yes you have a counter example to the zcp in characteristic zero and uh, in this context dobolas had proved that the makalaman invariant of this a1 is c so this supports that a1 can be c4 and another supporting result is due to dobolas and fossel who proved that the affine variety v is actually a1 contractible now this uh, there is a quite a bit of similarity between this uh, asonomous ring which is like this and uh, this russell corus three fold which is over the complex number field so which is a linear polynomial in y this again is a linear polynomial in y when i solved this case for n equal to this this, uh, this one asonomous ring is not a polynomial ring peter russell uh, he asked me what if you replace this zp square which is a non trivial line by any other non trivial line whether that ring a is itself not a polynomial ring and this led me what sorry this uh, led me to uh, consider a more general three fold uh, that is uh, led me to the study this three fold which is a linear polynomial in y and any polynomial in three variables to accommodate both the asonomous ring and the russell corus three fold over any field k means irrespective of the underlying field characteristic zero complex numbers take any field k and a general polynomial f and consider this ring and uh, so this is the three study of the three fold and we obtain that for m greater than equal to 1 this ring a is a polynomial ring in three variables if and only if it's a polynomial ring over the subring kx where small x is the image of capital x and a if and only if if you look at small f which is f0 zt that's a coordinate in znt if and only if this g is a coordinate in x y zt and if and only if it's a coordinate along with x and g so this is an equivalence of uh, five conditions and uh, the significance of this is that uh, there is a study of a polynomial in four variables x y z and t that has been reduced to the study of just one two variables small f so if you know that small f properties of small f then you can tell about the properties of the uh, ring a so and further we have shown that if uh, f is a line then this ring a is a stably polynomial ring thus if f is uh, not a coordinate then a cannot be a pol polynomial ring and hence we have got a recipe for constructing counter examples to the zersky cancellation problem that is whenever f is a line uh, this uh, g is a coordinate and uh, also we have uh, obtained uh, a family of uh, non isomorphic uh, rings so we have shown that two such rings if we vary your m and n and uh, they are isomorphic if and only if this m has to be equal to n and f and g should be associate to each other so if you keep on varying your integer m and n you get an infinite family of rings which are all not isomorphic to each other but they are all stably isomorphic to the polynomial ring and it also Uh, prove in one stroke why the asonomous ring or the russell corus three fold is not a polynomial ring because in asonomous ring small f is a non trivial line 
and in the Russell cos threefold, the small f is z square plus t cube, which is the cusp. And uh, this uh, treatment of uh, five equivalent statements actually gives you a connection between various problems in mathematics, including the cancellation, the epimorphism, and the vibration problems. So here is the list of uh, 10 equivalent relations, which I proved. And uh, the first five I have already stated. The later five relations are based on an invariant, which is known as the Duxon invariant. And it is uh, an invariant related to the group actions. So if the Duxon invariant of the ring A is a polynomial ring, is the ring whole ring A, that means it's same as the polynomial ring, then you can also connect it with the stabilized stably polynomial ring or the affine fibration, E2 fibration problem and another uh, invariant uh, K1 groups and so on. So this result has been uh, generalized uh, for n greater than or equal to three, this asonomous ring was generalized by me in higher dimension. So for any, if f is a line and I consider this ring A, then I showed that this A1 is a stably polynomial ring in M plus three variables. Further, if f is a non-trivial line, then A is an A2 vibration and A itself is not a polynomial ring in M plus two variables. Therefore, you have a counterexample to the Sersky cancellation problem in positive characteristic for any integer n greater than or equal to three. Why this counterexample? This is, uh, first of all, this k is a field of any characteristic, but the counterexample happens only in positive characteristic because this kind of non-trivial line exists only in positive characteristic by the theorem of Abhankar and Mohan Suzuki. So this result recently we have been able to generalize in higher dimensions. So here is the generalization in uh, M plus uh, two variables. So M plus three variables and here F is arbitrary uh, with the one catch that uh, small f plus a product in X1, X2, Xn and G. And uh, then we actually proved a similar statements like that uh, generalization in uh, this is the five equivalent statements that this ring A is a polynomial ring in M plus two variables if and only if small f is a coordinate or G is a coordinate like this. And in fact, uh, we have been able to prove an equivalence of 13 statements. So four of which involves the Duxon invariant and the other four involves the Makaliman invariant. And uh, so I don't have much time to describe all this and uh, I would like to stop here. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Nina, for a wonderful elaborate, elaborative talk. I think uh, you, you try to elaborate uh, as much as you can. And uh, I hope many students uh, will get, uh, get the idea of how the problems are appearing in the area of uh, algebraic geometry. Definitely, uh, all these problems are very deep with the very deep connection in algebraic geometry. So uh, any question from the audience side? Ji, uh, Imran, I have a question. Ji, Ji, Hassan, Professor Hassan. Uh, yes, Nina, uh, you mentioned the result of Suzuki. Is it the same Suzuki of Suzuki groups? And did it arise in investigation of uh, in group theory? Suzuki, I don't think, Miss. He works in affine algebraic geometry. So, so it's not Suzuki groups. I see. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, uh, it's uh, M Suzuki. I don't know. Are you talking about them? It, it, it is M Suzuki who, 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 who worked in group I, theory. He, he, may be, he may be working in group theory. I don't yes. know. I, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Suzuki's method was different from Abhankar Mo. Mm -hmm. So Abhankar Mo's method was very elementary. In fact, uh, you can read that proof of Abhankar and Mo uh, without any machinery in mathematics. But so the proof runs over hundred of pages. Yes, yeah. but proof runs hundred of pages. Okay. So what kind of machinery does one use in, in this type of research? Is it really uh, difficult? Is it uh, Suzuki, I suppose he uses complex geometry. Mm -hmm. 
So you need to know geometry, algebraic geometry or complex geometry for access mm. to Suzuki's proof. Uh, mm. Actually, it means after, uh, there are several other proofs of uh, epimorphism theorems. Uh, mm -hmm. One simple proof, maybe not too long. Uh, you can read it from the book of uh, SN. So polynomials and their automorphism. So there is a book by Van den Essen. So, mm -hmm. Van den Essen, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So uh, that is uh, probably elementary, you can read. Miss elementary, mm -hmm. I mean that uh, uh, you don't need uh, to know a higher mathematics to read the proof. Yes, yes. So, so you don't need any scheme to, theory or something in, the, in all of this. Only polynomials and powers is that true? <laughs> okay, Rina, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Asant, for uh, any other question from the audience? Um, okay, uh, Nina, I, I, I was just uh, uh, asking, uh, may you uh, please open, reopen your slides uh, where yeah. you was, uh, you was discussing about uh, the action of the field and uh, you said that this is equivalent to having uh, yeah. linear the grading, yeah, yes. the grading with the grading. Mm -hmm. I did. I didn't get that point. Uh, what do you mean by the existence of the homogeneous operator? Too? Okay. So okay. So yeah. uh, yes, there is something called algebraic K star action. So what is K star here? K star is a multiplicative group, but it is also an affine variety. Okay. okay. So when you talk about an action of K star on KN, so I will not take KN, I will look at the affine N space K and K. So this action is basically a morphism K star cross A1, ANK to ANK, which will take any lambda and a point in KN to a point mm -hmm. in KN, right? Mm -hmm. And this morphism should be your algebraic, it should be a morphism in, uh, terms of algebraic geometry mm -hmm. with the two axioms of group actions. That is the identity will operate as identity and the composition is that multiplication. Lambda, mm -hmm. if you have a multiplication, means if you apply it twice, then it should be the multiplication. In this. So this is called the algebraic action of K-star on E and K. But if you want to rephrase it in, so, So once you translate this ring theory, then this K star will essentially give rise to a grading of the polynomial ring Kn. So you, your ring Kn will become the depth sum of uh, uh, subgroups Bi and this grade. So you, you have more, probably have heard about graded rings. Yeah. Yeah, Anwar. So yeah, you, you yeah, probably yeah. know about what is a graded ring means. So yeah. it is a Z grading on KN. So mm -hmm. what do I mean by the K star action is linearizable? This essentially means that whether you can find homogeneous set of coordinates of KN. So KN is a polynomial ring. That is why I'm not fixing X1, X2, Xn to begin with. Mm -hmm. So the problem is uh, whether you can find homogeneous coordinates x1, x2, xn, where each xi is an homogeneous element. Mm -hmm. So like the polynomial ring K, Kn has an usual grading, Z grading, right? Yeah. You can take yeah. each xi to be degree one. But xi, yeah. you can give any grading. You can give xi to be, say, an i, any integer an i. So that will give you a graded structure. Mm -hmm. The problem is actually the converse is also true. Whether any Z graded structure comes with this kind of machinery oh, that you give it okay. some and so okay. so it's a way the problem is posed in a way you people want to work with. For instance, if you are an algebraist, you want to look at it as an, an problem in algebra or ring theory. If you are an geometer, you will translate it into geometry and then look at the pictures and ring of invariant and so on. So it, uh, it's like that. So yeah. for us, it's easy to think is as a Z graded structure. Yeah. And then what? Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. Thank you, Nina. Uh, any other question uh, from the yes, audience? Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 Aksa. Please well, go ahead. Uh, Ma'am, here's my question that uh, uh, you are defining the Z-gradient structure. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is that uh, if uh, uh, if I can find uh, algebraically independent elements, then I can I can show that the KN is linearizable. Uh, just uh, producing algebraically independent element is not enough because any set of an algebraically independent element did not be a coordinate set of coordinates. Hmm. Actually, the Jacobian conjecture is that, right? Okay. Uh, actually, yeah. uh, if I if I can find uh, algebraically independent independent elements, then uh, there should I be think, also the generator. I said, yeah, there should be also a generator, but. Uh, uh, there will be a homogeneous. Uh, there will be uh, a set of variables that will be homogeneous. Uh, I don't know how much you are getting me, but uh, I guess. Yeah, for instance, uh, the polynomial ring k x n up to x n, each x i mm -hmm. is homogeneous of degree one. Then I can okay. take x one square also. They are also algebraically independent, and each of them are homogeneous of degree. Two. But they are not generating the polynomial ring, right? Okay. X one square, X two square. They also works. They are algebraically independent, hmm. but okay. they will of course not generate the polynomial ring. Okay. So okay. finding set of coordinate is probably most difficult problem. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Nina, uh, 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 may you please uh, give some very good references for. Uh, all these problems, uh, particularly, uh, uh, definitely, you was uh, mentioning uh, with. Yeah, uh, there are some set of references. Uh, maybe you, the first place to start with would be Kraft's article, challenging problems in a fan algebraic geometry. There's uh, an. Uh, may you write? May you write on the chat box so that? Uh, yeah, I can. can. Just one second. Challenging. Another miss, we have also written one article that was only on epimorphism problem, but it also mm -hmm covers a bit of affine vibration and linearization just related to what we know. Kraft's article is uh, more uh, elaborate on other problems also means which I have not been able to touch upon like this characterization and so on. Linearization, he has more detailed treatment. Our focus was more on the epimorphism. So this was uh, the kind of, uh, this is Probably the epimorphism problem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Thank you, uh, everyone, and uh, thank you, uh, Professor Nina Gupta. I hope uh, that uh, we can have more talks with you, and uh, maybe in upcoming yeah, sure. years. And it, sure. it, 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 it's uh, really, really very good. And uh, uh, I already had a discussion with Professor Sudhir Gorbade, who is uh, yeah, great. Uh, yeah, and uh, I hope uh, we will have more speakers from uh, uh, India, Tifer and uh, from the group of Professor Abhyankar uh, on uh, our upcoming uh, lectures and seminar series of uh, this John Conway. Uh, now, I, I need to advertise uh, an, an our upcoming seminar. Uh, our upcoming seminar is uh, on next Monday. And uh, this time, another Japanese, uh, Nakajima, from the University of Tokyo, he's going to discuss about the mathematical definition of 
Coulomb branch of 3D n is equal to four. So see gauge theories. Okay, uh, the persons who are familiar with uh, with theoretical physics. So string theory is basically based on uh, these models. So Nakajima is uh, among those mathematicians who have uh, uh, translated these theories for mathematicians where mathematicians and physicists are working together. And uh, I, I hope uh, to see you all in the next week, uh, Monday, at the same time when Professor Nakajima will be explaining these things to us. Uh, maybe uh, they, uh, not the next week, week after the next week. Uh, so it's on uh, 31st of October, not the next week. I'm sorry, one correction. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you, Nina. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope uh, to see you once again somewhere maybe uh, yeah. somewhere in Europe and <laughs> maybe here in Hong Kong. Yeah, okay. Bye-bye. Take care. Take care. I'm leaving the meeting? Yeah, 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 yeah.